Dilly in the body snatcher right here. It's a champ. Big up the sports and icon. Subscribe. Otherwise, I might pay you guys a visit. Now, article in the description box as always. But before you go reading that, make sure that you watch this video and, of course, click that subscribe button if you haven't already. This is the place to be for boxing news. You know that. Now, Deontay Wilder, along with uh, Sean Porter, Cara Plant, Leo Santa Cruz, and many others have said that boxing cheats, as in PED users, should be banned for life. And this all comes in these guys having a round the table, if you like, and some um, streaming for a chat around Big Baby Jared Miller, among other things, of course, about him failing the test for the PEDs for his upcoming fight against Anthony Joshua on June the 1st at Madison Square Garden in New York. Now, Miller didn't just have one in his system, he had three. Now, Deontay Wilder is the one that so we're going to mention the most because obviously heavyweight, and of course he's linked with Anthony Joshua as well as. And this is what Deontay Wilder had to say, but as I said, I'll put it in the description box. Deontay Wilder's statement. I might not be the perfect guy to answer these questions because of my experience with these guys. Guys like that, drug cheats, they've made me miss out on a lot of money. They've made me go in some of my toughest moments of my career. Sit back and reconsider boxing. Sit back like, why is this happening to me? Why do these guys want to cheat me? Since I don't have all the tools and the necessary need for boxing, why do they have to cheat for me? All this stuff goes through my head. I have no place in my heart for a cheat. This sport is very serious and one of the and I'm one of the people always taking, talking about risking our lives in the ring. When a guy uses any type of thing to make his body perform how he's not supposed to, I don't have no respect for you. Nobody knows who this guy Jared Miller is. And then he gets the opportunity of a lifetime. I'm so passionate about it because I'm disappointed in him. I'm not disappointed because of the fight. I'm disappointed because of boxing. I'm disappointed because he allowed his family not to receive this blessing. And, and he has kids. But you know what? If you bless, bless a foolish man, it becomes a curse. This man Miller wanted popularity. He wanted fame. It came in the worst ways for him. I don't feel sorry for him at all. Not at all. What made him look so bad was that he wanted to accuse Anthony Joshua of something like that. Then he's doing it. I know a lot of guys that do it. This is not the first one. And guess what? When this drug comes out and got banned, guess what? Another drug comes out. They just don't have the technology to detect it right now, but they will. It keeps coming out and these guys keep doing it. It's going to be a, a real cycle. Only way it's going to stop is if somebody puts a real end to it and, it and he's got to be the example. Otherwise, it ain't going to stop. Lifetime ban for sure. I'm so passionate about it because, man, you've got an opportunity of a lifetime. Life-changing money. Win, lose or draw. You go home with that. Come on, bro. Come on, man. We've got to stop being soft. We've got to stop being soft about um, on this situation because everybody talks about it. We gotta wait until the facts come out. Nah, we, we know the facts. Lifetime ban. Count me in. Don't tell wild statement. So, you know, I agree with pretty much everything that he said, and he is correct. Now, of course, every case needs to be studied individually. You can't just say, well, that person had PED, so a lifetime ban. Every case is different. But with Big Baby Jared Miller, he knowingly took these three supplements. Even if you. You can excuse two of them, maybe accidental, but one of them, EPO, that's injection form. You don't get it any other way. So he, he knowingly cheated. Okay, so I can certainly see the case for a lifetime ban for those who are proved to have done it deliberately. Because it's dangerous, not only for their own health, but certainly for their opponent. The fans get cheated out of money and it puts a bad tarnish across boxing. You're bringing the sport into disrepute is what you're doing. Now... Again, what Wilde is going on about here is that Miller, he grew up in poverty, okay, as a lot of boxers do, which is why they turn to combat sports, especially boxing. And this was his opportunity, his golden ticket to provide for his family, for his mum, for his um, kids, for his wife, for his friends, his family, all these kind of things. Because he was getting paid millions in the region of roundabout between six and a half and eight million dollars. That's a hell of a lot of loot. The amount of cheeseburgers that he could buy with that is unbelievable, okay? You take that fight, win, lose, or draw, you go home with that amount of money. You, you never have to worry about it again. Exactly what Wilder says, and I can totally agree with everything that he has said. He's a little bit contradictory, though, that is for sure. He's talking about life-changing money, win, lose, or draw. But, you know, he did turn down a, a, what, 120 or $100 million 
take on Anthony Joshua for two fights. He turned that down. I mean, that's a serious amount of money. But I suppose one difference between Wilder and Miller is the fact that, first of all, Wilder can demand a whole crap load of money because he does have a title. And if Joshua really wants that belt, he's going to have to pay through the nose for it, okay? 100 million is way too much, but still, he did turn that down. But Wilder gets paid a million, two million here or there per fight anyway now. So it's not like he really needs the money. Whereas Miller, he needs the money. How much was he earning before this? 50 grand, maybe 100 grand in a fight, maybe, thereabouts. So I can certainly see what it is that Wilder's saying. Wilder doesn't need to take all these. Wilder could, as long as he's been careful with his money, he could just walk away from the sport right now. So it's, it's going to have to be something, probably more than money, to be honest, to get Wilder in the ring with Joshua, because I, because I don't feel that Wilder really wants that fight. Honestly, I don't. Or Al, Al Heyman or Shelly Finkel. Somebody just don't want that fight with Joshua. But the thing is, as... I've seen a couple of channels talking about this as well, and I'm in total agreement with them. Like, for example, like Bruce Bain, Casual Boxing Talk, Counterpunch Boxing, and I think the Hardcore Casual said it too, where it's, it's all well and good Wilder saying this, but what about this guy? Marcellus Wilder, your brother, who failed a PED test only a few weeks ago. Now, for some reason, they seem to have brushed it under the carpet. No real stories are coming out exactly what it was that he's failed on. But what we do know is that he has failed and his last fight has been changed to a no contest. He failed for something, but we don't know what. So is Wilder going to have that same passion for his brother? We haven't heard Wilder talking about it at all. Maybe he's disowned him. Maybe he put him in, what, in the box in the corner or he, he sat him on a naughty step. Because we... When Marcellus Wilder failed that test, one of the first things that I said was, I'm sure because of what's happened to Deontay, Deontay would have went in on him. I couldn't imagine even him being his own brother, he just went, ah, oh, you know what, never mind. I'm sure that he would have went in on him. Okay, well, I mean, whether you like Wilder or not, I think that's his kind of character. I think he is anti-PEDs. But you see, this is the problem when it comes round to it though, because you can say a lifetime ban, but as I said, each case merits his own investigation. Every single one of them does. Say, for example, Lucas Brown. It was proved that it was over-the-counter supplement. He didn't look at the ingredients himself. Ultimately, it is your own fault. You should always check. But the list is always expanding. It's always changing on VADA, on UCAD, and any other kind of anti-doping agencies around the world. They do change all the time. And it is difficult to keep up with them. And not everybody can afford to employ nutritionists and all these kind of ones who know about all this kind of thing, who will keep up to date with it. So it is an... Um, a hell of a lot of information to take on board on your own. So for me, every case warrants its own investigation. So a lifetime ban, for me, no. But it depends on the case. I can certainly see a case for Miller to be banned for life because he injected stuff into his backside or into his veins. However it is what he'd done it. Okay, he'd done it. Um, also, did Wilder say this about... Luis Ortiz, when he forgot to put the high blood pressure medication on the form. How do we know he didn't just forget? How do we know that this was some kind of masking agent? Again, this was a lot of talk around it. Did Wilder say ban Luis Ortiz for life? No, he didn't. Why is he saying it about Miller? Did he say it about Povetkin? Now, Povetkin is a different case because Povetkin, um, apparently um, one of the labs was contaminated and Povetkin has since sued and countersued Deontay Wilder or Team Wilder and won the case because um, I, I think he failed on a, a small part of something that was previously legal, but they had enough time to cycle out of his system, so the fight should have still went ahead because it was within a legal threshold. And then um, he passed a B sample, all that kind of thing. So I suppose he couldn't really say lifetime ban for Povetkin. I mean, maybe he did, but um, I just don't remember it. But there's so many different cases. I mean, you've got Shannon Briggs. He failed because he took something for his asthma. So every case warrants its own thing. So a lifetime ban, just blanket statement, lifetime ban for everybody. So if Marcellus Wilder, if it turned out that um, all he'd done was smoke a doobry, whatever it is you call him, the, uh, the Moroccan homegrown, the marijuana, whatever it is, should he receive a lifetime ban for that? I think that would be a bit harsh. I do. But ultimately, if you're a professional athlete, you're getting paid, you're on the stage, especially a world title fight, you need to make sure that you are clean purely clean and I'm glad that Wilder pointed out in this one as well that he's actually defending Joshua in this one where he's saying that this isn't Joshua's fault this isn't the case of um, Joshua's done something wrong Joshua is the victim in this one 
Miller went in there to destroy Anthony Joshua. So I have to agree with a lot of things that he says in this one. Uh, I mean, he could say that he was a lifetime ban for Miller because he didn't like Miller. Um, these guys have history because of the sparring, because um, uh, Miller used to date his uh, current girl or whatever. I don't know the full details of it. It's their own private business, I suppose. But there's definitely needle, so he's probably going to throw the hammer a bit harder than what he would at anybody else. But anyway, I'll put the article in the description box. You come up with um, your own thoughts and views as to what you think with Deontay Wilder. For me, I'm in pretty much full agreement with him on pretty much everything that he says. And he is passionate about it. He really is passionate about it. So I can only praise him for that. Anyway, you drop your thoughts below about it. Click thumbs up and of course, subscribe. Catch you all on the next video.